Hi, my name is Andrew Townley, CEO of Archistry, and today I'm going to give you an overview of SABSA, a framework and methodology for effectively managing information and cybersecurity. What is SABSA? SABSA is a framework of complementary frameworks that work together to ensure all relevant risks are managed so the organization has confidence it can reach its goals. Originally developed as part of the SWIFT Interbank Transfer Project in 1995 by John Sherwood, SAMHSA has been actively developed and expanded since then by John Sherwood, David Linus, and Andy Clark. SAMHSA is now used in over 2,000 organizations worldwide by more than 5,000 officially certified SAMHSA security architects to ensure their organization's information is protected from cyber threats. Being business-driven means truly enabling the business to execute successfully within the organization's risk appetite, or how much risk anyone is prepared to take to achieve their objectives. SAMHSA provides a structured, transparent way to enable the organization to embrace this uncertainty and take risks with the confidence provided by a complete, integrated, and monitored set of security controls. The SAMHSA methodology is the only risk management or cybersecurity method that can demonstrate transparency and traceability from the goals and objectives the organization wants to achieve, clear through to the processes and technical implementations of the controls that enable managing the threats to business success. A scalable and modular governance model centered around risk ownership and policy definition is the heart of the SAMHSA method. There are four phases in the governance model, or SABSA lifecycle, closely related to the plan, do, check, act feedback loop made popular by Dr. W. Edwards Deming. The first phase is strategy and planning. In this phase, the objectives and environment is analyzed to identify what threats exist to prevent the objectives from being reached so that the appropriate control requirements can be identified. SABSA also ensures a balanced view of business uncertainty, not just focusing on the threats, but also ensuring potential opportunities resulting from better-than-expected delivery are, are examined. The output of the strategy and planning phase is a security strategy, including business capabilities called attributes, performance targets, metrics and measures for performance of those attributes. Collectively, this information represents policy in SABSA, and it defines the service level agreement to be met in order to effectively manage risk. The second phase is the design phase. Policy, including the business attributes, performance targets, metrics and measures, and responsibility for managing uncertainty through meeting those performance targets, feeds into the design phase. The activities of the design phase are the steps necessary to create the logical representations of business information and services, determine the best physical mechanisms and components to implement those services, and design the security management processes in which they will be used. Once completed, these designs, processes, and implementation steps are then passed to the implementation team. The third phase is the implement phase. This phase is where the security and risk management controls are actually developed, implemented, tested, and made ready for deployment into the organization. Once they have been declared fit for purpose by the implementation team, then they are given to the service management operations teams to execute and manage on a day-to-day -day basis. The fourth phase of SABSA is the manage and measure phase. This phase monitors and collects the security performance information required to report the performance of the controls in managing uncertainty within the risk appetite of the organization. The information is aggregated and prepared according to the requirements of the recipients, previously established as part of the policy definition during the strategy and planning phase, and then communicated to the risk owners. Based on the actual performance of the controls and potential changes in the external threat and opportunity environment, the risk owners may wish to ch make changes to their policies or how those controls are implemented. If so, this triggers another iteration of the life cycle in order to accommodate the desired changes. Different things change at different rates. Management tools and techniques, technologies, approaches, staff, and the business environment are all in a constant state of change. However, the primary goals and objectives of the organization change much less frequently than technologies or the sophistication and modes of cyber threats, so it is very important to ensure that the way security is delivered can change without having to go back to the drawing board. 
SAMHSA provides a layered architectural structure so that these rates of change can be managed in a controlled fashion so that if new compliance or legal requirements arise or new technology solutions appear, the impact on both the organization as a whole and the security control policies, processes, and infrastructure can be predictably managed. SAMHSA identifies six distinct layers of architecture change needing separate management by people with skills specific to a given architecture layer. The contextual architecture identifies and captures the business context of the enterprise and the conceptual architecture takes this context and identifies the key concepts important from an information security and risk management perspective. Both of these first two architecture layers are defined during the strategy and planning phase. The next three architecture layers are all defined during the design phase of the SAMHSA lifecycle. The logical architecture provides the logical abstractions of the conceptual architecture into business information security services, and the accountability for risk ownership and management across the entire organization. The physical architecture selects the best data structures and technical mechanisms in order to implement the logical security services, and the component architecture deals with specific vendors, tools, roles, and individuals involved in managing the risk to the enterprise. Finally, the last layer of the SAMHSA architecture model is the service management architecture. All of the activities designed to provide assurance, operation, and management of the security architecture are defined at this layer. A major feature of the SAMHSA method is transparency and traceability from the highest level business objectives through to the components and activities involved in actually managing enterprise risk. Likewise, it is also possible to answer questions as to why a particular control or vendor was chosen by walking backwards through the traceability model to provide justification that the item in question is an integral part of meeting a given security requirement. SAMHSA further provides a set of perspectives that act as lenses to focus the analysis at each layer of the architecture. The first perspective is the assets perspective or what column. It defines what assets are at risk at each layer of the architecture. The second column is the motivation or why column. This perspective is used to identify the risk motivations and define specific policy components at each layer of the architecture. The third column is the process or how column. This column is used to catalog and decompose the end-to-end -end processes of the organization at each layer so that assurance in meeting the security requirements of any given process are traceably met at each layer of the architecture. The fourth column is the people or who column. The people perspective is used to identify all of the entities, stakeholders, and individuals making up the organization's extended enterprise and how those entities are represented and realized at each layer. The fifth column is the location or where column. This column deals with the various geographical, logical, and physical locations of entities and assets within the enterprise, specialized for each layer. The last column is the time or when column. This perspective is about time and the identification of performance targets, calendars, and deadlines relevant to the organization, its people, or processes. Together, the six rows and six columns provide a rigorous analysis framework to ensure that the architecture traceably and measurably supports the business in a cost-effective and risk-proportional manner. Early on in the development of SAMHSA, John Sherwood realized that there was a distinct difference between the service management architecture and the other five layers. In essence, the other five are talking about things, and the service management architecture is talking about doing things. However, since creating the correct enterprise security architecture requires doing things at each layer, it is appropriate to fold over the service management architecture over the other five to identify specific tasks and activities that must be performed in order to make sure the correct architecture is created. With the service management layer, or row 6, of the architecture matrix placed over the top of the other five layers, specific activities required for each of the six analysis perspectives can be identified and cataloged. This catalog of activities making up the SAMHSA architecture method is called the SAMHSA service management matrix. So to review, activities of the SAMHSA service management matrix are performed during the SAMHSA life cycle for each vertical analysis perspective in order to capture the information required to create the artifacts in the SAMHSA architecture matrix. 
Once the artifacts have been captured during SABSA's strategy and planning and design phases, they are operated and managed with performance regularly reported to the relevant stakeholders during the manage and measure phase. Thank you for your time.